I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing. I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. Working man sucks. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Working Class Holes podcast. I'm your host, Ed McGowan, here in the break room with my co-host, Josh Ricardo. What's Eddie? up, buddy? How you doing? I'm all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm fucking cranky is what's going <laughs> yeah, on. I hear you. I hear yeah. you. Uh, I wanted to start today's episode out by just giving a quick shout out to a working class hole mm. who has passed. One of us. Uh, my grandmother. Oh, yeah. Alice Porlis, that's her name, from Hawaii. She was a professional hula dancer at 18. She danced for Elvis. Oh, wow. She has a picture with Elvis when he's shooting Blue Hawaii in front of his hotel oh, wow. room uh, after the show. From there, she danced her whole life, worked two jobs to support her family, an extension, her grandchildren, uh, worked as a catering waitress, a buff, uh, banquet waitress, if you Bank, will, at the uh-huh. Hilton, carrying giant trays on her shoulder up until 80. And oh, the shit. only reason why she stopped working is because due to the pandemic, she couldn't do the job anymore. And then when she tried to go back after like the year off, right. she's like, I can't all my the rust is too much now Yeah, right because when you're carrying around all those but she would easily still be there and i think wow. honestly she might still be going yeah instead of dying at 83 i feel like she had some more years left but oh, didn't work man. out that way but she was a working class hole like us yeah. so salute yeah salute gone home yeah yeah aloha oh man aloha yeah you say aloha yeah, yeah. Aloha and goodbye yeah. uh-huh. goodbye right wow yeah that's aloha, uh boy, huh let's do it that's that's wild. So she was working right up until, I mean, legit, two years ago. Yeah. I mean, she tried to go back. That's I'm gonna be, dude. I'm so gonna be working into my 80s. I have to. Yeah. I mean, I okay. This is great to start the show off with because that's what I was thinking about. Would I always want to be working? Want to be working? Or do I have to be working? Yeah. I think. Uh, well, <clears throat> so my dad just retired. Man, and he's not dealing with it at all. Dealing well with it at all. What's well, like one of those things? I think it distract. Like my grandmother had two jobs. She even cleaned houses at one mm-hmm. point, and she had to because my grandfather retired early. He's one of those dudes like just decided to retire super early. Mm-hmm. So he sat at home for like tw- he's been dead for almost twenty years, but he sat at home for almost for over twenty years. Oh wow! Just retired. So she worked. Bailing grandkids, bailing kids out of problems, bailing grandkids out of issues, mm-hmm. everyone staying at her house. I mean, I think the Hawaiian culture is really dependent upon what we call tutu, which is probably the equivalent of black people in America, like Big Mama. You know, the oh, Big Mama. Oh, tutu. Okay. So tutu is like essentially the Hawaiian version of Big Mama. She's uh-huh. the matriarch. She, all these kids keep having kids so young. Right. So she's stuck with all these little kids because yeah. her kids keep having. I just she's the force, man. And yep. I think that generation has allowed the generation after them to slack on that role because they've been living longer. So I don't know what's going to happen. You know, it's like the glue, if you remove it. And this is definitely a working class thing. Like, it's, oh, for sure. Like, did you have like a equivalent of that? Was it your grandfather? No, so uh, we didn't have that. Uh, we had, um, but everybody lived close to one another. So, <clears throat> like when I was a kid, my grandparents would do the daycare. Like when my parents oh, were at nice. work. So my grandparents would come over. You know what I mean? Because they were just, bro. they were right down the street. Um, yeah, like everybody kind of grew up mm-hmm. in the, oh, I think we talked about this before. Like it's yeah. different when you move to the city and you have, like my sister's out in LA. She's got no fucking support system. That's who we are here. Yeah. My, my wife and I, right? Yeah. Like Lauren and I are, no one's, we got to pay. Yeah. If we leave the house without him, we're paying somebody to, to yeah. watch him. A lot of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So growing up, I always had the grandparents were around, uh, <laughs> But not like um, everybody was married. I mean, I guess all the like my aunts and uncles, they were all married. So the thing of like where the because I have friends that like where the grandparents raised the kids. Right. And the parents were like, yeah, fuck ups. Yeah. Where the grandparents took over. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I had friends like that, but I didn't I that I didn't have that. Uh, exact experience yeah that's a, a pretty common thing yeah in, in certain like especially in my neighborhood there were yeah. a lot of grandparents that were 
doing raising the heavy little lifting. kids. Yep. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. yeah, 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 totally. Uh, it's funny because when you know you talk about being a banquet waitress, I mean she worked at the same job for fifty plus years. Yeah, wow. She celebrated, I, I want to say sixty years with them almost. That's wild. Because what happened is she gets pregnant in Hawaii. My grandfather uh, and her get married. She's very young, probably 20. They uh-huh. move to San Diego because he's out of Korea, still in the Marines, carries over his job from the service, based in San Diego because all those you know oh, right. military service stuff's out there. Right. Same thing with my dad's family. And then she, from that point forward, worked the same job. That's... It's wild, right? It's funny how... It's so wild when you see somebody that's been at a job for that long. I mean, when you think about like the show that we're doing right now where it's like, yeah, we never leave the job. You stay there forever. Like You don't move up. You don't move down. Yeah. You just stay. You just stay the, at that. You head down. You yeah. stay the course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's the thing. I guess there's a point where it's like, it's a bummer that you're still at this job. But then after you pass like 30 years, you're like, Dude, I don't even think about this job. Yeah. It's like so autopilot at a point. You know what I mean? Like yeah. where you're just like, this is, it's easier to just keep this job than to go learn a new job. <laughs> Who wants to go learn a new job now? I don't even have to think. I come in here, I just zone out. No, I mean, it's like it's her talk time. about autopilot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, bank, bank of waitress. Yeah. That I think for her, I think my aunt, my, my mom's sister, this is my mom's side. I think she's similar where... They can't work a straight job. Like I couldn't see her being in an office. It's a they need to be because being a server and being a server not working for tips. Yeah, that's a different kind of. You checked out. Yeah, you don't it's have like, to. You don't have to deal with that. It's, it's like a, a, it's a machine. It's almost like a retail thing where yeah. you're like uh, like unloading a truck or something <laughs> like that, where you just like next. You don't next. like yeah care. Nope. Yeah. But to do that for for 60 years. But the other thing that happens, too, is everybody on the job loves her. Yeah. She is. I think by the time she hit, like, 60 and she was already there for 40 years or whatever, they're like, oh, we love. She's the queen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Yeah, she was beloved. Like, when we would go there, she was beloved. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny to think that, you know, you could spend so much of your life in that one place and then... Everything you've ever done is with, I mean, everything she's done in 60 something years is within a five mile radius. Yeah. It's like wild. everything of meaning, mm-hmm. like the job, her church, her children. I mean, that's how it used to be, though. Yeah. Right? That's how it has been. I still relate for you know, centuries. Like it's all yeah, hitting right. me right now because I don't fucking relate to that. No, I know. Five miles of her yeah. whole life, you can get it all in there. Yeah. Yeah, it's wild. It's cool, man. That's very, very, very cool. Yeah, she will be missed, but yeah. hopefully in a better place. So let me ask you this. So I was thinking about this. We're coming up on the holiday season. So what do you think she was like? So that, I'm sure they had like holiday parties. <laughs> oh, at the job? Yeah. Oh, dude. They, they used she, to do this insane. Sh- so when I was a kid. Was there a lot to- of Hawaiians there? Or was she the only Hawaiian? At, at the job she had? Yeah, at the job. Uh, so my aunt was like a higher up for uh-huh. a long time. Her eldest sister. She's one of 13. Oh, wow. She's the youngest girl. Uh, so, oddly enough, there are only two left now of the 13, uh-huh. and one of them is the eldest, oh. who lives in San Diego as wow. well. Uh, so, that was the reason why my grandmother moved to San Diego, too, is this woman, her older sister, was her already sister. out there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and this older sister kind of raised my grandmother, because my grandmother lost her mother very young. Mm-hmm. Um, but she got her the gig. So, it was her and her sister, and I don't want to say the the chain that she sure. works with just because whatever yeah. but they did this really great thing for a lot of years where you get to go to this huge like banquet space it was just for the employees and it was like all their kids and of course san diego and the wait staff and all that a lot of mexican kids and me oh yeah you yeah. know it was like a lot of mexican kids yeah, and me but, yeah. every year yeah. so i got to know all these kids from like a barrio like a logan <laughs> uh 
all, all those dudes. I ended up like being friendly with them throughout the whole course of my childhood. That's cool. Uh, just because we would go to these events where you get to decorate a fucking acorn and you meet Santa and you do all oh, this shit. They do so the whole thing. Oh, they do so the was, whole thing. But so that's like an old school job where they like took the fa- the yeah. family kind of like they embraced like the family. Yeah. You don't get that, that shit. Was, well, now corporate, the bean counters came up with that, but in a way that could be budgeted. Like I think a lot of jobs in the 80s especially – a lot of companies that weren't necessarily a publicly traded company mm-hmm. uh, were like, oh, what, what are we going to spend on the ho- the holiday party this year? And if they had a good year, they were like, let's just fucking blow it out kind of thing. And that's what I felt like they did. There was more money to go around then for that kind of stuff. Yeah, that, I, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, you don't really have that uh, anymore. I mean, I guess smaller companies still do that kind of thing. But like, eh. Yeah, you, I guess because I've been that. to a lot of holiday. I mean, you've been to a lot of. Well, here's work, what like I want to talk parties. to you about this week. Yeah, you have the greatest Halloween costume ever worn by an employee. <laughs> My crusty the clown. So okay, all right, let me set this up. <laughs> <laughs> so for the for the listeners that have heard the show before, we've all heard about over the course of the 15 episodes we've done about Ed having a functional working life as a crackhead, (laughs) as a severe, severe addict, working at a very high-end job around important people. And one day, they're they're like, we're gonna do, everyone wear your costumes, it's Halloween. Take it from there. What did you do the (laughs) night before? So I, here's the thing. I have to give, and I forget this dude's name. This guy I knew down in Philly, he did a Crusty the Clown costume, <laughs> and it was like legendary, where he shaved his head, and he was just like he was just like Crusty the Clown. Like, hey. so what is the? <laughs> uh, so you were doing the you were doing the voice. So song. so he had to. So I was like, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that up here in New York. I'm gonna fucking. Who so inspired you? I, he inspired me. Yeah, yeah. But I was like, I was. Nervous. I didn't want to shave my head. Well, what's the job? Tell everyone the job you're working. Oh, so I'm an assistant editor at. Um, this is the SNL job. The, yeah, yeah, the story yeah, yeah. you've told on the show. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. The okay. SNL job. Yeah, yeah. So I'm there. It's my first. I've been there maybe nine months, eight months, right? Nine months. Yeah, I started in like January. So uh, I haven't even been there a year yet. The first Halloween party. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna go big. And it's like they. How? Okay. Let's pause. What What level of your addiction are you at at this point in time? And for you, as an addict, what did Halloween mean to you? Because I think some addicts use it as like an excuse to go even harder, oh, right? Oh, dude. Notor- oh, man, I have Halloween stories, bro. Okay, okay. I mean, okay, so like six Halloweens prior, I woke up handcuffed to a bed. <laughs> <laughs> what was your costume? Because I was dressed as a ninja <laughs> with real swords in a blackout. Blacked out with real swords. My dad had to come pick me up, and he goes, and I was swinging the swords at him. <laughs> but like as a joke, I don't even like know. Like Britney Spears recently. I don't even know. Knives. Yeah, like I was crazy. I was kind of, I was crazy blacked out. So how did he get the cuffs? He just, you know, it just wrestled me down. He got me down, and then like just hogtied me. Oh, like with a belt. Yeah, and then I woke up. Uh, Tied to the <laughs> tied to the couch. <laughs> what time was it? Was it like the 2 next p.m.? Day? No, it was like the next day, like ten a.m. Just let you I sleep w- it off. <laughs> People walking over you with their cereal. <laughs> a fucking ninja. Hog tied to it. Yeah, dad caught a ninja last night. <laughs> you know, he hog tied him to the couch. My dad refers to it as the night of the ninja. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was dark, dude. It was. What if you're like you just was, take on the persona of every character you've ever dressed up as for halloween I, yeah <laughs> really i did do? you're a method actor i really did i i took a bunch of shrooms one time and dressed up as a werewolf and i was like how ha- i was ru- i was on top of cars howling at the moon <laughs> yeah halloween's not a good time for me like it was a good time but i've what do you i go do you way remember any of it i go way over the edge with halloween i don't know you don't why say. yeah <laughs> what do you get so into character <laughs> I don't know. I've no. Look, listen. If I had that much self awareness, I mean, I would be uh, much farther along in life is, right this now. This is the part that I've never. <laughs> it's never occurred to me in the times that we've talked about it. 
is I didn't know your previous history with Halloween. Oh, I didn't yeah. didn't know you're an absolute shit show. I'm a every shit Halloween. show every Halloween. Yeah. And yeah, that yeah. you're getting into the character. <laughs> like, who gave you real swords? Uh, they were in the house. I got, I took them, <laughs> I took them from the attic. Yeah. Your dad just taking trips. <laughs> no, no, it was my mom's boyfriend at the time. I just, I was like, I'm taking these out. Uh, I'm doing, I'm going to do a ninja. What if you cut your ear off and your dad was in the ER and tried to fight your mom's, uh, boyfriend, <laughs> like Ralphie Stiferetto, like who gave him the fucking sword, you stupid cunt? <laughs> Uh, I just love the visual of Eddie McGee as a ninja. The mask on, the fucking... <laughs> what? She's tied to the couch. What's so great about it was it was like a $5 spirit Halloween with real... outfit with with $100 sword. That's you know, how like... I approach my clothing line. <laughs> the shoes cost a lot. Everything else like a $5 outfit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this whole getup cost me $4. The you shoes are $400. Like $300 shoes. $300 shoes. <laughs> That is my approach to all of life, but uh, the, werewolf, so the, the werewolf, werewolf one what, was great. Werewolf, one, I was down. I was living in South Philly. What, what do you do? Like, what's the party? What's the scene? Paint the picture. We were outside, so we were. Uh, we ate a bunch of shrooms. I was dressed up as a werewolf, and then once the shrooms started kicking in, I was just like, I looked down, and I had like, it, I I remember this like so distinctly because I did the uh, the hair coming out of the sleeves. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like right there, and I looked down, and I was like, <laughs> "If you came Tim Allen, I, I just did it. Yeah, yeah, I just went <laughs> into. It. I was like, I was run, and then I was like running around all crouched down, <laughs> like amongst just kids, just trick people, treaty. just yeah, no, just hanging out. No, it was in the city, so it was oh. like uh, there was. But if you're in the burbs, there was a grown band, man in a werewolf. Outfit. There was a band playing on Second and Front or Second and um, Market uh, at the Continental Diner. Uh, G Love and the Special Sauce. You remember him? I do remember special yeah, sauce. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they were playing on the corner. So it was like this hangout, and and then I just started, like while the band is playing, I'm on a, the hood of a car, howling. Oh. Uh, it's, people were just like, "What's happening? <laughs> is this part of the show? Like, is this part of the show? If you're not in a very good costume." <laughs> It's just like the worst. Well, that's the thing. You're getting so into I, I it without the proper resources. I was just wearing like sweats, <laughs> and I and I had some like fur. A couch potato werewolf. <laughs> yeah. Even in a werewolf, you'd be a couch potato. <laughs> he just left the blinds open. And he caught the full moon. <laughs> yeah, you fucking but, run out yeah, with Doritos <laughs> all over your shit. Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> fucking <laughs> piss stains in the front of your sweats. <laughs> Just showing up to some dopey one-off concert. That would definitely be you as a werewolf. Yeah. It's you at a fucking ween concert. Just drilling teenage boys uh, in the face with your werewolf claws. Uh, now I'm thinking of some other Halloween. Well, so finish the crusty one. Uh, so now Cause that's I'm, yeah. funny. Cause so the now picture, I'm up in, we got to flash the picture. So now I'm up in... Uh, yeah, oh, right, yeah, we'll show the picture. Okay, cool. So now I'm up in New York and... It's the first. It's like first time we in New York, and I'm like, I'm going big. I'm gonna do the crusty, but then I'm like, man, I don't want to shave my head. So I go and I buy, buy like this bald cap, and I'm gonna like just make holes in it and do the crusty, the three point hair. You know, hey, he's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know how hard that is to do, even when you're not an addict. Like that's like serious makeup effects. Oh, to, to cut the bald cap properly. To yeah, get the I have hair no. Right? I had no idea because it's huge hair coming out. I had long hair. I had crazy long hair too. So, uh, so I'm like, and now I'm just drinking. I was like two days. I was just like, I don't even remember. But I was just going. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh, I forgot all of this. Yeah, story. I know. There's I a whole bunch it. of this story. Yeah, 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 it's a ton. It's a huge story. So, uh, so the night before, I'm all fucked up. I'm still like, I'm. I got like an eight ball, and I'm just drinking tequila in my apartment by myself. And Are I'm you like, in cokies? No, I, I get an eight ball. That was like twenty bags. You would just get bar bags. But I would call. I called my drug dealer. I had like a fucking legit eight yeah, ball. Oh yeah, solo. <laughs> just you know, medicating. Uh, just and by yourself, just by myself, just before work, just drank it the night before work. And then now I'm just up, and I'm like, I'm doing a thing, and I snap the bald cap, and I was like, fuck it, let's just do it. And I just shave my head in the crusty so thing and you, then dye it blue so you with were this. so against shaving your head you bought a bald cap and then the minute you had an eight ball in your system and some tequila 
and you fucked the bald cap up. Once You're I like, fucked the I bald cap, commit. I was committed. I was doing the costume. So you had to shit. It was happening. Yeah. So then I was like, you know what? Do it for fucking. Do it for real anyway. You know what I mean? I was pussying out. So. <laughs> So then, and then the crazy thing is, I don't know how to. Di- real, anyway. I never dyed my hair before, so I had bought like blue, uh, hairspray Uh-oh. paint kind of thing. So now my whole head. <laughs> I didn't think to do it before I shaved the head, so now my whole bald head is also blue. Um, then I paint up. I go into work, and uh, people what see. What did you me. paint yourself green, right, or yellow? I, I think I just did a white. No, I just did a white face. Okay. I just did a white face, and I had like a clown nose. Okay. Right. So you see, and what was the outfit? You didn't have a clown. Yeah, I had a little tie. You had definitely a tie. had it. Okay. Yeah, I had a little tie. Uh, yeah. So I, so far, more of the more in depth costumes you've had thus far. I mean, the ninja one was probably. <laughs> <laughs> the swords were sharp, dude. Uh, no, yes. I, there was a lot of purchases that went in. There was a lot of planning that went into this. I show up, and I just smell like tequila when I get off the elevator, and everybody. And I'm like, and oh, I'm you're like tuned up. I'm you're like doing the voice, right? I go showtime, dude. As soon as I get out, I go. Hey, hey, hey. It's it's nine a.m. <laughs> on like a Tuesday, right? And everybody's like, you know, in their like, you know, when it's Bo, bunny like, ears. Yeah, yeah. 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 someone's got like, like a little leopard. Yeah, office appropriate. I'm like, hey, hey, hey. I come running in. People are having their coffee. I'm like, oh boy, Ooh. <laughs> it was a rough night. <laughs> everybody's like, holy shit! I did not break character the whole day. Like it's a work day, yeah, dude. People and I'm just done. I'm just like the character all day. At one point, the uh, don't they one, throw you in a room? The or producer something? comes up to me. She goes, "Hey, um, just hang out in here. Take a nap." <laughs> <laughs> That's so great. Like those kind of artist jobs back then. Yeah. They're cool with you. Just and they like your. They know yeah. you're a hard worker. You're yeah. lovable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like a dog that's. Yeah. too crazy they throw you in a, a room yeah exactly yeah it was like a dog right yeah, yeah, yeah it's just barking excited. too much yeah, yeah, yeah. you know at a, at a, like a, a party right so she and the funny thing was before she was like yeah just lay down but hold on a second and she snaps this picture <laughs> i love this picture oh, it's so good it's so perfect so I, now that whole day goes on uh i lose the competition <laughs> I did not win. I did not win the competition. You think it's because they didn't get to see you enough? You they put I you got in the room one, for too long. No, I got one vote, uh, and everybody goes, and he goes, I, I vote for Ed. Everybody went, really? And he goes, he shaved his head. <laughs> I love how you didn't even win and you shaved your whole head. Uh, and then, so then, so then you had to live with that shaved head. So though. then I go out that night in the same outfit. I just go out straight from work. Yeah, I just, we go, we go downstairs, we're drinking, and then I go to, I don't know how I got, so I met they, up with a buddy of mine. went out and drank with you, your there coworkers? Was a, well, for a, to keep a, you in a room? 20 minutes. Oh, okay. And then I just. Then you went off on your own. Yeah, uh, I just went off. I, I just, I ran into, my buddy was in town to see Widespread Panic. You ever hear that band, Widespread yeah, Panic? Yeah, actually. So they're at the Madison Square, they're at Madison Square Garden. He goes, dude, we're going to the concert. I was like, yeah, dude, I'm out. I'm, I'm fucking, and I show up, and I'm dressed like Krusty. Now, the crazy thing is, is like when you have a clown outfit on and you have the red nose, yeah. everybody knows. Yeah. You take that red nose off, and you just have a shaved head and a white face. Oh, you look, you look like a psychopath, oh, yeah. dude. Just a that's lunatic. a better costume, actually. Yeah, yeah. So now I'm rolling around like that, just all fucked up. Why'd you take the nose off? Why didn't you couldn't commit to the nose the whole night? Yeah, oh, the coke. Yeah, doing coke. It's hard to do. Yeah, <laughs> should have stored your coke in that nose. <laughs> I didn't even. I wasn't. Instead you know of a beer helmet, you got a clown <laughs> coke nose. I'm just. I'm just putting it on. <sighs> an eight balls in there that you're sniffing throughout the course of the night. Dennis Hopper style, like ah, I love fucking Heineken, <laughs> patch blue ribbon. <laughs> uh, so I go to a widespread panic concert. You actually bought a ticket. I don't remember how I got in there. I, this I is don't. what it's insane to me. It's like now I feel so old because I remember being out in New York and like having stories where, when I, especially when I'm dr- power drinking, my power drinking days, if you will, I fuck, oh yeah, I ended up at this place. And I, well, if I, somehow I'm at this but Then I'm watching a soccer game at 5 a.m. in Europe at this fucking yeah. Ukrainian bar. Yeah. It's like now that I don't do any of that, I'm like, I know. how do you even end up anywhere? It's wild. I'm trying the, to get home. The places I would just end up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm in this concert and I'm doing my fucking crusty shtick. <laughs> Just walking around, just doing it. I, I remember I had a full audience at one point. I was just like, oh, hey, 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 you know, just doing the fucking. You're at the, you played the garden. <laughs> yeah, I played the. I played the concession stand at the garden, but uh, yeah. Loge Thirty Four concessions. <laughs> I killed. 
at Loach 34. Concession. Killed and then passed out uh, in the seats. And, you know, like. You so, fall asleep in more concerts. I've fallen, I fall asleep in a lot of concerts. Than I've been to. Yeah. That's inc- yeah, Your yeah. life is a. Uh, I just, I woke up and it was so crazy. I woke up. I didn't know who was playing because they were playing cover songs and they were playing a Ramones. They did like a, because they were in yeah. New York, they did like a Ramones like thing. And I woke up and I was like, fucking hey, the Ramones are, the Ramones are here. Because <laughs> I don't know shit about the widespread panic. I'm just there because my buddy's in town. <laughs> and you woke up and forgot <laughs> yeah. entirely the reasons for even being at the garden. Just I'm you like, and the owner, uh, James Doyle, whatever the fuck that guy's <laughs> name is. <laughs> fucking Jimmy Doyle's like, hey, yeah, let's Jimmy go. Doyle. <laughs> hey, Krusty, man, we loved you. I heard about you from Concessions Loge. The word got around to me here in the owner's box. So we brought you here for you to sleep it off. <laughs> you just keep ending up in different rooms where higher ups are going, let this guy sleep in this room. The rooms are getting continuously better. <laughs> uh, uh, it's so good. I had a costume once I wore to a job. It was an office job, and I was a Rastafarian. Uh huh. So I had the bit, like the hat that came with the dreads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I try to wear it the whole day. Just what a pain in the ass. Oh, it's a costume's good for like twenty minutes. Yeah. I just want to take it off. Yeah. So then I had to go to a family party, and I had just started doing open mics. Mm-hmm. And it's all I could talk about. Like, oh, that was my life, right. right. Yeah, right. And my family is a perf- like I'm their little monkey, like a little dancing monkey. So they convinced me to do a makeshift show in the garage at my uncle's house. How old are you, 20? 20 something years old, uh-huh, right? Yeah. 22, 21, something like that. Mm-hmm. One of the worst bombs I've ever had in my whole life. It, I can I'm only, the, and I'm dude, I can Rasta, only imagine. And I'm in the Rastafarian oh, shit. Oh God, are you that talking was, in the accent? No, everything? no, I mean, I didn't go laugh, I'm not you. <laughs> <laughs> I actually want to do my jokes. <laughs> and I am bombing. And I could just see out of the corner of my eye a little bit of the dread. It was just very, very Ooh, humiliating. Yeah. That's a sad, yeah. yeah oh, it was, I, and I, it, it stings. Bringing it up stings. Yeah, that's that, was, that, was a, that stings worse than my ninja story. <laughs> <laughs> At least you have an excuse. You're fucking threatening people's lives with real swords. I was threatening people with my jokes. Like they hated me. My own family hated me. Who? <laughs> I mean, that's why my balls are made of fucking titanium, my friend. Yeah, I'll I do know any that, show. I now. know that feeling though too, because I was when I was in film school, I made a bunch of films, like student films, and I remember I had this one where it was just this guy stalking this girl, but it's just the camera on the dude in a car, and he's like just drinking coffee. You don't know what he's doing, and he's just yeah. driving her. I called it dri- dri- driven crazy. Yeah, and it was fun, but he's just sitting in a car cursing, you know for. 12 minutes yeah. you know what I mean with that fucking bitch uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> just <laughs> God, who the you, fuck is this you cast my dad <laughs> Joe yeah right but I remember that's all I heard for <laughs> 20 years <laughs> him smoking cigarettes drinking coffee call my mom a bitch <laughs> I just still have a VHS. I just still hey, have the send v- it to my dad I'm going back home soon I'll bring the fucking coffee hey this is your mark on the world yeah. <laughs> This was this was this made. young filmmaker <laughs> tapped into your story. It, it was all for naught, Joe. <laughs> you fucking bitch all day. <laughs> <laughs> he always had a seven eleven coffee, a fucking grit, and cussing about my mother. That's, That's the movie. hilarious. That's so funny. That was the fucking movie, dude. Oh my god. Yeah, so I played that for show- well. I played that for my grandmother uh, or my dad. Isn't played- that funny how you just lose sight of yeah. like, who's the demographic and right. anything? Like you and don't you're just know playing anything. for your family. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm just blowing the f bomb and I'm playing it for little kids. <laughs> just like laying in on the f bomb. Oh man, yeah, yeah. But that, that was one of the worst. Of yeah, Halloween uh, is a, used to be a horrible time for me. Oh yeah, because I never was invited. I'm not like a. I'm not like a guy that gets invited to a lot of places. Oh, you mean like you didn't have a crew that you walked around with? I don't have any. Yeah, I'm a pretty, mm-hmm. my whole life, very uh, anti-crew, I guess. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But it helps to have some friends when the Halloween comes around when you're like a teenager. Oh, yeah, yeah, And yeah. even in your early 20s, like, oh, dude, I was in, fu- your early 20s, when you start seeing girls dress in those outfits and you're just some 
fucking ugly fuck in the corner. Not, not no one's inviting you to the Halloween gathering. That is heartbreaking. Yeah, I guess. Because you yeah. want to be in. Because you're about the party, and you had party friends. That gave you a... Right. And here's the thing. When I didn't get invited to something... Mine was I, women. I had no I women. Knew, I knew it was because of something that I've done. You know what yeah, I mean? You like, like a cause. Like, like a, I, this, you always had a one-two. I had, yeah. There was a, like a reason yeah. for... Uh, yeah, no, he's not allowed to come over here anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that. I, I So I, I could always... I always had that to like lean on. Like It wasn't me. It was my antics. Yeah. Right, as much as see, I it was think you still know, just me. You gotta, we all have to forge connections with individuals to have them feel comfortable around you. And if you're bad at that, you know you're probably not gonna get invited many places. Not because people necessarily don't like you, but right. they don't know you. Right, right, right. You don't want to hang out with a dude you don't really know. And I get that, but see, Halloween brings all that up for me. See, we're we're reversed in that way, we where are. I think. People um, invite me. They think I'll be a good time. And then they're like, well, we're not having him back. And then, you know what I mean? You might have a hard time getting the initial invite. Yeah. But then when you get the invite, it was like, oh, it's so yeah. nice. We'll yeah, have yeah, him yeah. back every we year. We are reverse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 100%. Yeah. Uh, but that's all. Every time I, like, I think of how like, I was in New Orleans for Halloween last year. And I was by myself doing a gig. It's fucking brutal. <laughs> but New Orleans is a super fun city. Uh, and Tulane is right there. Oh, okay. And they shut down a part. It was, it was, I might fuck this up. So if you're from New Orleans, reach out. But there's like two portions of Bourbon Street. There's like the north or the east. There's like different portions of busy streets. There's like Bourbon and there's another street on the back end. I heard you're not supposed to go past a certain part of Bourbon yeah, Street. So is that, that? Ba- well, there's a back end of Bourbon Street. Uh, it's like, so there's Bourbon Street and there's, there's another street that's, the second most it's where like the blue oyster is the jazz place or whatever it's like a lot of the jazz places are on this street mm-hmm. and Tulane I guess was just having their stuff there mm-hmm. dude I realized that I hate youth because I never got to do any of the stuff that they were doing oh it was just like everyone looked the best they're probably ever going to look in their lives. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. And they're all in one place partying. And it was just like this no-consequences bubble I didn't have access to. And then here's the part that did me dirty. Always the part that gets me sometimes. This girl walks by with her boyfriend. Uh Uh-huh. Probably the greatest ass I've ever seen in public being shown and it, you know, it was a very nice and it was on, just on display full display <clears throat> yeah right with like some mesh on it or something just yeah. like it was like a yeah. cat costume but yeah. basically it was a but full like blow could have lingerie been something she could be walking around in a strip club it was her underwear yeah it yeah, was yeah, yeah it was yeah yeah and that was like the i gotta get off the street because all of that 17 years of therapy i know every reason why i'm triggered in that scenario mm-hmm. but the ultimate is I got to get away because it doesn't matter. Like that feeling of not belonging. Oh. That's some shit. And Halloween does that to me. Huh. It's a weird thing, man. Huh. I don't know what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's such like a party holiday. Yeah. New Year's, same thing. New Year's, I don't. New Year's is different because New Year's is so expensive. I always feel left out. Because you don't want to spend any money. You're yeah, because I'm just, I'm not. See, you always have like a, oh, it's because of this. See, I don't have any, I didn't know about any of that stuff. Yeah, the, the money thing always kind of throws me off on New Year's. Like, I'm just like, I just feel like, I always feel like I'm broke. Well, you get New duped. Year's makes me feel broke. Yeah, you, get you know duped. what I mean? Like, yeah, it makes me feel like I'm just, because uh, I'm not going to, because the thing is like, I'm not going to throw $500 at, uh, on a prefix. Especially, especially when I was drinking, I was like, dude, I could do this. I do this every night. Yeah. that's. I'm it. not going to spend 500 hours to do what I always, like, I'll just yeah. take the night off. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it yeah, always yeah. made me feel like a, like a cheapskate or like being broke or yeah. something like that. That's New Year's has effect on me. Halloween, um, yes, the party element, the factor goes up. I got to kick it in the high gear like here. A professional holiday for partiers, Halloween, right? Yeah, to be able to like, well, yeah, because you, everybody's everybody's out. And you got the yeah. girls and the, like the slutty yeah, yeah, nurses, yeah, 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 all that yeah. stuff. You just want to be like out and about. It's it, it the stimulation factor, and it's the reason why probably men in strip clubs 
or anywhere else, like if you feel all of that stimulation, it's insane. Like stimulation right. is on level 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was having this feeling, I was doing sets last night and not drinking as much. I'm seeing like when I really want to drink and it's when I'm a, socially being forced into a social situation, right? Because uh-huh, uh-huh. I have to be there. Right. And it's like, okay, make a choice. Are we going to be standing against this wall for four hours? Are you going to have two cocktails and just burn this bitch down? Like just start roasting everything in front of you, uh, you know, starting a problem if you feel it's necessary to start a problem. Because like, uh, then it's like, oh, if I get these two drinks in me, I'm going to throw, I'm just not going to, I'm just not going to even care about anything. It's not because I'm drunk. It's just solely going to yeah. be like, I'm going to drink these two drinks and then all of you are in fucking trouble. Like, <laughs> that's what it signifies to me. It's no, like, middle ground. Yeah, the two drinks, I, I was always, I was always, like, really at my best with two drinks. I it's just, the best. Two drinks is where I live. It was I, at my best, but it's such, like, it's, you know, it's like a 20-minute <laughs> window. I know, and then you're because, so, so... Because then I'm like, shots. <laughs> Let's go. I feel great. I feel fantastic. Let's ruin it. <laughs> Have you ever brought a flask into the job? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew a lady that used to do that. Uh, old lady. But I've never done that. I've never, I don't think I've ever drank on the job. And that's why I don't have a lot of alcoholic tendencies. Yeah. It, I, like that. Like I have, I don't hide a flask. I, I had don't. a flask. Here's my thing with the flask. I had, I man, I was so proud of this flask and then I lost it. Like I had only had it for like four weeks. You know, somebody gave me a flask and I was just like, and then I lost so my pumped. flask. Oh, dude, I was, I had it everywhere with Such me. Such a Philly thing too when it's cold out, you unscrew it. Oh, a little fucking nip. A little yeah, bit, exactly, dude. a little nipple. Oh, dude. I love it. Uh, but I, I never had that kind of stuff. Like I never wanted to drink at work. I never wanted to drink alone at home. But uh, you get me in a social situation, boy. It's home. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, social, yeah, I, um, I've always just, I mean, I, the first time I drank, I blacked out. Oh, you just always go so hard. I just, I remember I was like 13, maybe, and we were at this party, and somebody had like Bacardi 151. And I was like, yeah. Just lightning on fire. In your yeah, mouth. 151. And they were like, oh, wait, we're going to get some mixers for it. I was like, you don't need mixers. What? Yeah, like I was like, you don't need mixers. Give me an ice cube. And I just chugged a glass of Bacardi 151 and just. Bye bye. Yeah. Later. Bye bye. Fucking Edward. going out front, just getting hosed off. Because you're yakking. <laughs> People were just hosing me down <laughs> in the front lawn. Are you sure, that's water chuckles. <laughs> it's like just Tommy get, Boy. Just it doesn't pooped. smell like mud. <laughs> yeah, my buddies bathed me, Dad. My buddy. He pissed all over you, all right? Not your buddies. <laughs> I ever tell you about that story? We used to have, uh, this is so gross. We used to have, uh, like, when we were, you know, I guess like 17, 16, 17, we would have spit fights. Uh, yeah, just crew. It's so gross. Oh, so the gross. The smell of other people's spit makes oh, me want to throw up. It's disgusting. So we're uh, we're hanging out at my buddy Pat's place, uh, like, just, and it, it just, you know, basically it's like we would always just spit, right? So some, something would happen, you would spit, and it would, like, hit somebody's shoe, and you'd go, yeah, what the fuck? And spit on your shoe, and the next thing you know, it's like, and it just escalate, and then just a fucking spit fight happens. Fucking seven dudes just spitting on each other, and it was so gross. We were animals, and so now it's, and I'm like, I'm trying to duck out of the way, and we're in Pat's driveway, and he had one of those basketball courts in the driveway. The well, like the 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 portable one you put sand in. No, but it was what? No, it was drilled into the ground. It was cemented into the ground because. I turned around, cracked my head on it, and gave myself, like, knocked myself out. And I come to, and I got six of my friends leaning over me. Bukaki and you just spit. Bukaki and you just spit, dude. Just, oh just. Do, do, do. What a great bunch of guys. <laughs> All still friends to this day. Oh, to this day. Yeah. So funny. And then my dad pulls up to pick me up. <laughs> <laughs> And everybody, I'm laying there, I was like, yo, knock it off, knock it off. And then all of a sudden I hear, yo, yo, it was dad. His dad's here, his dad's here. And and they all like part ways, and I see my dad's car sitting there. My dad's looking at me like, what the, he just sees his son just covered like a, like a young porn star just covered in spit. I walk to the car, he goes, 
you're not getting in this car. Yeah. <laughs> No way. <laughs> so Pat had to f- run yeah. the hose and hose me off. <laughs> oh, it was so gross. See, being your dad, I, that must have been exhausting. Yeah. I, I mean, gave, it's because of him, though. Too. I gave him a lot of, uh, he had a lot of work to do. Yeah. 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 This is what I want to ask you before we end the episode. I wanted to ask you if you had anyone, I thought of this, uh, you ever had a boss not that was not a friend, that was a superior and was super inappropriate with how they chastised you if are critical of you at the job. Inappropriate? Well, like I had a I had a woman, I worked at this terrible job where I had to like copy and paste a bunch of stuff. Uh-huh. And one time something wasn't right and she called me stupid. Oh, wow. I just in front of people or over just over the you phone. T- uh-huh. But was notoriously rude. Wow. And I needed the job so bad. And I couldn't say anything. And every, I would be shaking with, because this was like uh, 14, 15 years ago. And okay. uh, I could, I, I really didn't have the capacity to not make it a, like a full blown unprofessional screaming match. Like I had to not, because I knew if I lost a job, right, I couldn't pay my rent yeah exactly right literally would sit and go have to go like into the bathroom or somewhere to Mm -hmm. to not flip like flip so now did you how was her interaction with you face to face the same or was it just over the phone she was Uh, like just a total she was she was just the it was one of those jobs where she got away with murder because of the commissions she brought in. Uh-huh, right. So she had already been through a number of... Right. Of, no, 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 because yeah. there's people... Right, she's got kind of carte blanche a little bit. Yeah. She's got some clout. And she flexes but hard. But I'm just curious if she's more she shitty with you. Me. She was tough. She was not weak by any means. She was right. a very tough uh, person. So it wasn't like she was not mean in person. But I don't think I remember her calling me stupid... In, to my face Yeah I don't think that would be something That would be great for her Yeah right I, I feel like I At least gave that vibe off Yeah yeah But she definitely Over the phone Yeah yeah, yeah. She took some Took some of her own liberties And then In person She was very dismissive Uh huh Yeah Would look at you Oh yeah 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 But like not Not like in an autism way No But like you were just, less you're Than less her than 100%. Kind of way uh, Yeah dude I worked in advertising bro I, I worked with people a, like that that is like I'm learning more and more man that is the fucking how to be able to play the long game on that shit cause as a guy in my position working class holes a guy in my position (laughs) I don't have a I don't have an avenue to get you in in the chess match of of corporate right cause I would need to figure out a way to get into a position down the line to devastate you brutally and swift from a business standpoint oh, and there's no way i'm gonna have that leverage over you you're so far ahead of me in the game uh, yeah you just know the only thing i have the only card i've been dealt is that i am willing to make it a physical thing in hopes to scare you right for disrespecting me in a way or taking money out of my pocket and that doesn't work in the long game because they put you in prison for that shit. Yeah, 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 dude. So no, I can't do anything that not... I actually have power over doing no, in those yeah. scenarios. And it's hard yeah. because I'm looking for the same thing they're looking for. Just an even playing field. Like, I'm not trying to be a bully. I just want an even playing no, no, field. No, no, yeah, but so that's a difference. If they don't you fear you, then there's no even playing field. Right, right, right. But so, like, when I was, like, coming up as, a like, an assistant editor, like, these uh, creative directors would say the just awful fucking things to me and i would just be like all right this guy's a fucking asshole and then but like you're like i need vengeance i need to find out I what need retribution how, on this dude yeah and i'm like i don't i don't th- that was never i never uh would retain that and i think it's because i used to get arrested a lot and you know By the deal. cops. Yeah, I've, I've, where, I've like not I had learned, that. I learned. Thank God. You know, you we learned talk quick that, that they're not. There, there's some things, some battles you just can't. Like I got beat up by a bunch of cops yeah. at one night. Yeah, and yeah. I just I'm like I was always like, oh okay, so yeah. There's some. I don't want to get arrested again. There's some yeah. people that you can't. Yeah. 
th- it's just you can't touch. Yeah. It's just so that's touch. what I mean though is like yeah. if I can't hit you or if I can't impose my will upon you because of the cops beating me up, mm-hmm. the the even matchup is how do I take money out of your pocket? How do I take power away from you? How do I humiliate you in front of those whose opinion you value? That's the angle. Like, how do I do that? And the only way I do that now, the only way I can do that is I will openly roast you in, in front of all your friends in public. Right, right, I right. will make you want to hit me. Uh-huh, I am uh-huh. okay with making you want to hit me. That's great. That's it. Yeah. That's the only thing I got is I'm going to pick you apart. That's great. I'm going to try to make you kill yourself. That's awesome. <laughs> that's all I, that's I all it. I got. That's all we got. Yeah. That's all the working class person has against the authorities, if you will, the executives, if you will, is that I will break you down into a place where you're going to I'm going to shine a light so fucking bright. You're never going to forget me. <laughs> <laughs> that's how sick my mind is. It's great. Because I, I can't because people are doing it to me. I can't stand it. Well, you you have I'm a little lazier, I think. That's you have but a much, but you're in the it's just the value of that you don't see it as much as I see it. You just like to, in other things you, you're able to do, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. There's a lot of things you're able to do that I'm just not able to do. And there's a lot of things that you're like. We, yeah, yeah. That's why we compliment yeah, each other we do. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. there's stuff that you do that I'm like, there's there's no way I could do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm the same. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's so funny. Though. <laughs> I love I love watching uh, when I see the, what was that? What's that fucking movie with uh, Matthew Broderick? Election. Oh, that's the, how a great movie. Who was the girl with Reese when, Witherspoon? Yeah, when she would get when and that like, ah, <laughs> like when she would like they would get close up on her face. Yeah. Like I feel like that happens to you. Like somebody's like you're like yeah, let dude just fucking slight me. Being slighted for me. <laughs> and I was like, and I'm like, no. It's <laughs> just I'm like no. You're like my wife. <laughs> and Lauren is the same shit. Lauren, I, on a number of occasions. Because yeah. she knows, like, like the I answer sit- is the answer is maybe, but I'm just like, no, nah, you're all right, <laughs> you're good. <laughs> I never know. I, I figured you were doing that to me, but I I never let it process. But yeah, you really do do that. That's so funny. there was there was one in particular. We'll talk about it off air that I was it was a I was like the answer was maybe, and I was just like I corrected myself, and I went no. <laughs> I can't wait to hear who it was. That's how many people I get pissed off at it a day. I don't even remember. know which one it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so good. Uh, All right. Go ahead. Give them the plugs. Uh, what am I? Uh, I got a new website, edmcgowan.com. You can find it's me on beautiful, Instagram. beautiful, by the way. Yeah, it go. looks good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Ed McGowan Comedy uh, on Instagram. We have an email address. We have not gotten any email. Somebody yeah, fucking on, email just... us. Uh, it's workingclasscomedians at gmail.com. Just, you know, say fuck you. Just try and Anything. instigate. Something. Send your email. Just instigate Josh <laughs> so you can get a, like, a little rise out of him. I'll read it. I'll totally read it. <laughs> I won't even tell him that we got it. I'll just surprise him with it. I'm like, hey, we got an email here. Josh, somebody's got a problem with you. Uh, He's <laughs> like, this motherfucker. God damn it. <laughs> Cut this. <laughs> Uh, Josh Ricardo at Josh Ricardo on everything and joshcardo.com. All right. We'll see you guys again next week. Later. You can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every Wednesday. You can follow us on Instagram at Working Class Holes. Also, make sure you watch the full show on YouTube. All you got to do is type in Working Class Holes. And please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend. Come on. 